Hello, and welcome to a scary session. I went into this session scared, and what I mean by that is the stakes at the time for me were particularly high. I mean, these are incredibly high stakes in general, but sometimes I played 501k with enough of a bankroll and you know, on an upswing that, that I was very comfortable. I don't remember the particular details, but I know at this time, I think I'd probably been losing for a while and my bankroll was getting a little bit tight. And so 501k is, is a very big game. And second of all, I'm playing this player, Cadillac1944, is a recreational player, which is why I'm taking a shot this big, but also is incredibly aggressive. So over the time that I played with him, I think he three bet 50% of hands, which a normal three bet is about 18, 20%. These days at that time, this was in 2010, a normal three bet was probably closer to 10, 12%. So not only were the stakes really big, but he makes the gameplay even bigger. I went into this nervous. I'm sure it affected my play a little bit. Let's see how I do. So what I have for you here is every hand that either got over 18K or saw the turn. So that'll you know include a fair number of hands from a session, uh, especially because when he three bets, which he does quite often, the pot is immediately 18K. Um, so I wonder if I should be limping more against his strategy or if he would start three betting less. So he three bets and checks on ace king three, which isn't really a thing. Although if you have a 50% range, maybe it is. I go with a small bet and he folds. So I must have had a read, I don't recall this. I must have had a read that he was very often folding when he checked these boards, either very often folding in general or very often folding when he checked boards that were really good for his range that you would think he would see about a lot of good stuff on or that you would think he would see about a lot of stuff on in general. Uh, so off to a good start. Here, we three bet queen 10, nine, six, which actually is a three bet. I didn't think that I knew that at the time, but apparently in 2010 I did. Small bet flop, that's pretty good. That's what I would do today. I'd go slightly smaller and uh, we take it down. Look at that. 2023 fill approved. Okay. So against somebody three betting 50%, opening nine, six, five, three single suited is not 2023 fill approved. I would still probably limp this hand against him. Um, so I expect to have a post flop edge, but it's tough when, when stacks are this deep to, or, or sorry, it's tough when you, when you make the pot big, you reduce the stack to pot ratio. Uh, and then you get into a spot like this where he's potting flop. I think he potted a lot of flops too. I have a pair, I have a double gut shot, I have a club. I think I should just call here, which, which I do. I turn is a jack, he pots again and I have to fold. And uh, it doesn't feel good. Here I open, this is okay, he three bets again. And he pots flop, so this is tough. So he was potting so many flops that when he pots this board, it's not like he needs to have a really strong hand. Um, potting this board is not really a thing these days. I mean, I think I need to call because I think calling with queen high flush draw is better than calling with king jack because king jack, both hands don't beat his, his value bets, but this hand has more outs against his value bets. Like I could just see him doing this with, you know, ace, king, deuce three. Um, so I think I like the call. King turn, he checks. Problem is there are two flush draws out now. His flop value range, I mean, maybe he has a five, but he's not folding that on the turn. But if I check the turn, can I represent anything on the river? I don't know. I'm tempted to small bet here and make him fold his air. But I don't know. That's what I did. Okay. It's at least, you know, 20, uh, 2010 fill is somewhat in line with 2023 fill. And then he opened Jam's River. I actually remember this hand. Um, I mean, I called and he had, I think, aces with a flush draw. Oh no, jacks. All right, I didn't fully remember it. He had jacks with a five and jack high flush draw. So that worked out very nicely and we are off to a good start, very lucky start um, as he did, you know, bet pretty big on that flop with a very good hand. Uh, so he min raises button, I just call. Check, check, flop. We have two flush draws. I don't know what I like here. Betting is fine. Take it down. Defend the big blind, seems okay. Check, check. Don't really love checking turn. I think I just need to start value betting. At the time, I didn't have a small sizing, which this would be a nice small bet, but it could also be a two thirds pot bet. Clear check on the river. He checks down. King eight, seven, six. Looks pretty good. I might've expected him to bet that on the turn. We open aces. He finally does not three bet. 
Uh, but he does donk full pot on deuce, deuce, six, rainbow. So quite uncomfortable already. He's repping a deuce, but we're not going to fold aces with a backdoor flush draw. He checks on the five. I think we should check. He's going to have a somewhat polarized range, and if he doesn't have a deuce, he's drawing near dead against our hand. Checks river. I have no, I have no clue what he has. Uh, I'm tempted to bet half pot, even though I can't have air. Uh, just hope he finds a call. But he had threes. And, and and interesting that he doesn't bluff with threes when he turns the straight blockers. Uh, here he limps. I get to check back one of the worst hands in the deck. I have no idea why I'm betting this turn. I don't like this. Um, I guess I'm bluffing. Yeah. Um, I don't mind. I don't know. Uh, let's just move on. <laughs> I don't know. This hand, I would probably not open against somebody three betting as much as him. He also donks flops. So yeah, against somebody who's opening, uh, who's three betting a lot and donking flops, raising weak hands on the button does not perform very well. I think this is just a fold against full pot. I went with raise because I just didn't believe him, and I get it smashed into my face. He just wants to smash in 250 big blinds. <laughs> uh, okay. Nice flop for me here. Sure. Raise call three bet. Okay. He checks flop. Earlier we saw that he checks kind of weak on these boards. I went for a big bet this time and it works once again. Call three bet. I mean, again, I should limp this hand, but uh, it is a call of the three bet once he three bets and easy fold on this flop. He's potting flop. I think this is a call. Check and hope he bets 4K. I don't know. Um, I just don't know. Yeah, fold seems fine. That's like entirely read based, and I don't remember any reads on him that would sway me one way or the other. Here we open and call a three bet. Um, it's actually kind of interesting. At 100 big blinds, it might be correct to just start ripping stuff like this in pre because he's three betting 50% of hands. Um, but at this stack up, no. So he pots, easy call. He pots turn. Um, if we had like 130K in stacks, I would rip this in. At 190K, um, I think it's just a call. I don't know. I went for the rip. He calls. That's not good. He had set of nines plus a flush draw. I mean, so the question is, is he doing this with ace nine? Um, and pro which is probably, is he doing it with King nine? Like how, how crazy is he? And then is he calling those? So, cause on this board, there are not that many draws. There are no open enders to be had. So I like just calling turn and I mean, I'm getting stacked on uh, like an offsuit seven river, but on the seven of diamonds, I don't need to. Uh, so there goes, what was that? We start with, there goes a, a 430k pot his way. And my scary session is getting a little more scary. All right, so this is what you want to see. You want to see the, the pot size donk when you have something. I think with a hand like ace three, I would raise here and hope he just rips in you know, a week three. But with queen three, I want to let him try to catch up. I went with raise anyways. Um, wow, he just smashes it. All right, let's see what, what you have. Ace three, ace on the turn, it's not looking good. <laughs> Is not looking good. I, I guess I maybe thought he was reasonably value heavy here and would just smash in any three. Which, I mean, his play is well. It's hard to say his play is fine because you don't have a you don't donk pot on this flop. But having donked pot and getting raised, his play is kind of fine to rip in ace three with no diamonds. Check call. Check. Whatever on the turn, I fold. Okay. Raise call three bet. You could maybe rip this in two. See, like this is where it gets really awkward is he pots flop and you have an overpair and he's potting so many hands that it's hard to fold. I think I like call and then just, you know, turns get really awkward. I just ripped it in instead, which is not the end of the world, but it's just my equity is not very good against anything that, that wants to get it in uh, with me. And uh, he just has top set. So this is uh, this is going poorly very fast. 
Uh, raise call three bet. We flop very well. He pots. Do I want to call or jam? I think just jam because I, I want to take the fold equity. But he is going with it. I don't think I'm going to win with jack high. Just has top set again. So, I mean, we're seeing a lot of, I don't know, we're seeing him see bet a lot, but we're also seeing him have sets and stuff a lot. Um, so it's kind of hard to say uh, how aggressive he's being. And we saw him check flop and then check fold to a small or medium sized bet on boards that were pretty good for his range. So it might be the case that his sea betting range is stronger than I think. All in all, I lost $400,000 that I could not really afford to lose at the time. Um, but I, I made sure to quit then and not make it worse. Um, and I kind of hobbled back to some lower stakes to rebuild as I'd, as I'd done before. It was a sad day though at the Galfond apartment. And it does seem like often when you go into these sessions taking a shot and you're scared and uncomfortable, it does often go poorly. And part of that is because of selective memory and negativity bias. But another part of it is that when you're scared, you do play a little bit more defensively, you play worse. And I saw a couple instances of that uh, over this short session. Uh, however, I think I still should have had an edge overall. If you want to see more of these hand reviews, please let me know. I do have more hand histories. They start to get a little repetitive. I have like six sessions at 501k against Patrick Antonius. I have a bunch of no limit hold'em sessions at 100, 200 against Crazy Elior. But let me know what you want to see. And uh, if you want to see more of anything, whether it be these old sessions or otherwise, subscribe to the channel because I am making more and more videos. Good luck out there. Don't do what I did. Take care.